What is up, Packer fans? Welcome in to an all-new episode of the Pack-A-Day Podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. Thank you so much for being here today. We have one of my favorite episodes of the year. Today, we are going to be doing the 25 most likely Green Bay Packers draft selections in the upcoming draft, which is, by the way, freaking tomorrow. We finally made it. We're this freaking close. I can't wait. It is going to be so exciting, Uh, but we're going to be going over the most likely Packers selections. And last year we did this. We did 25 most likely Packers and we hit on three. I don't feel terrible about hitting three. I think we should have done better if I'm being honest about it, but we hit on first round pick LVN. He was on the most likely 25. We hit on third round pick Tucker Craft, and we hit on fifth round pick Dontavian Wicks. I'm also super mad at myself because I distinctly remember, and you're just going to have to take my word for this, but that the 26th player that I had on my list was Grant DuBose. He was the last person that I let off, and that should have been four people. Also, Luke Musgrave was somebody that I put on my mock draft the day of the draft, so I probably should have had him on as well. There were a lot of Packers-type selections in that draft. So like I said, probably should have done a little bit better. We are going to do better on this one. And like I said, I don't think it's bad that we got three of them right anyway, uh, but we're going to get even more of them this year year. But before we get there, just a couple quick things I want to go through. First of all, uh, shout out to Packer Report and Cheesehead TV. Um, A lot of you are listening over on Packer Report or on Cheesehead TV. Both of them are generous enough to allow me to put the Pack-A-Day podcast on both of those channels. Uh, So shout out to them. And both of them have amazing Packers draft guides. It is worth it. Even if you're getting it today, a day before the draft, trust me, you're going to want to go back and look at all of their analysis and grades and everything that leads up to it, uh, even after the draft. As soon as those players are picked, you're going to want to thumb through those guides and see exactly what was said about them prior to the draft. So make sure to order both of those draft guides, the Green Bay Draft Guide over on Packer Report, and of course, the Cheesehead TV Draft Guide as well. Lots of friends of the podcast and actual Packaday podcasters as well uh, that are part of either of those teams, both of those teams. So make sure to check those out. And again, just a huge shout out to both Cheesehead TV and Packer Report for being both amazing partners here with the Packaday podcast. Also shout out to our new member, Mark Sawyer. Appreciate you signing up. We are well over 300 members now on the channel. That means the world to me. Thank you so freaking much and keep those numbers coming because uh, we are doing a ton of stuff this week with draft content. We are doing two members only shows, one today on Wednesday at noon. Another will be following the draft on Saturday. So you're going to want to be a member so you get in those live Q and A's and can ask all the questions that you want. It's worth it. There are a ton of options available for signing up. All of them have different perks. So make sure to check that out as well. Speaking of all the draft content that's coming out, Wednesday, as I mentioned today, noon central time, I'll be doing a live members only Q&A. Thursday during the day, noon central time, I will be doing a live Q&A for everyone. Uh, Draft day Q&A, anything that you guys want to go over prior to the draft. So that'll be noon on Thursday. Thursday night, I will be live streaming the entire NFL draft. So you're going to want to check that out as well. Friday, I will also do a live Q&A for everyone, noon central time again. So make sure to, to, to check that out. Again, we'll break down what happened on Thursday and look ahead to Friday's draft. Then Friday, I will be live at Badger State Brewery from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. doing a live Q&A. Then from 5.30 on, Ross Uglum will take you home through the remainder of the draft at Badger State Brewery. Well, I will come back home in this beautiful office here, and I will be doing a live show along with Maggie Loney, Jacob Morley, Andrew Murtag, and Brennan Rupp. And we will take you through the entirety of rounds two and three of the draft on Friday night. And then, as I mentioned on Saturday, I will do a post-draft members-only Q&A. And you never know if I get the inkling that I want to talk about something and I want to jump on a live chat. If something crazy happens, who knows? I might just go live at any given moment. So just keep your eye out. There's going to be a ton of reaction content, uh, big breakdowns coming up. So now is the best time of year to subscribe to the Packaday podcast channel. And that's just not here on the video. That is on the audio side. We've been doing three a days, guys. Ross Uglum's daily draft, both on the YouTube channel and the audio, has been unfreaking believable. And then we've got our regular Packaday podcast through 300 crew, 365 days a year 
year. They do such an amazing job and I can never thank them enough for everything they do. Um, I'm so thankful for each and every one of them. And as good as they are at podcasting, they're even better people. So make sure to check that out. And then of course, myself doing it 365 days a year. So there is content all freaking over the place and this is the best time to get it. So make sure to subscribe. All right, enough of that. We have a lot to go over. So Let's get into our most likely 25 draft picks for the Packers this season. Now, a couple things here. Obviously, I can't get all of these right because they have 11 draft picks, right? They can't take all 25. Secondly, we can't know who's going to be available. We'll just take, uh, who do we want to use on this list? Kingsley Suamataea, uh, right? He's probably too rich to go 25. If he just gets taken at pick 35, and Green Bay then picks again at 41, they just have no chance, right? Another player, just spoiler alert, that's on this list is Tyler Guyton. If Tyler Guyton goes pick 23 and Green Bay doesn't move up, well, we're just out of luck. He's not going to go to the Packers and we can't get that pick right basically no matter what. So some of that is going to inherently happen. The other thing here is I've got a bunch of offensive linemen on this draft. In fact, I've probably, or on this uh, list, I probably have, I don't know, maybe eight, nine offensive linemen on this list. Clearly, even even if they want it, they're not going to use eight or nine offensive linemen on their 11, of their 11 picks. So this is basically going over the most Packers-y type players in this draft at positions of need, and they just really scream off the page as potential Green Bay Packers. So it's not an exercise in seeing exactly how many I can necessarily get right because that's an impossibility. But these are the players that feel and look and everything else like Green Bay Packers. We'll see if they become Green Bay Packers. Like I said, last year we got three, should have been four right, and I think we're going to do even better this time around, so let's go right away. Number one on my list is Dominic Puny, offensive lineman out of the University of Kansas, 6'5", 303 pounds, had an 8.16 relative athletic score, did the full gamut of testing. He is 24 years old, more on that in just a moment. He hit all the metrics for offensive line. He's played tackle. He's played guard. He can move all over. He might have five position versatility in the NFL. He might just have to be a guard. We'll have to wait and see, but he has played all over the offensive line. He was a senior bowl invitee. And um, I think he has the ability to come in right away and compete with Sean Ryan at guard. And I think he can be really a backup depth piece all across the offensive line. Now we know that Green Bay likes their younger players, but it's not going to always be a deal breaker. We know Devontae Wyatt was 24 years old when he was taken in the first round. So I don't think Puny is going to, I don't think it's going to be punitive, no pun intended, uh, you know, for Puny to be 24 years old uh, in the second slash third round. And this is the other reason I think that this is a really strong bet for Puny is because where he is going to go is probably that late second to mid to late third range where Green Bay has four draft picks. And we know offensive line is a position of need. We know how much Green Bay loves taking tackles and moving them inside. And we know how much they value versatility. It is not a mistake that Dominic Puny is one on my list. I do believe that he might just have the best opportunity to become a Green Bay Packer of anyone in this entire draft. Like I said, you never quite know he could go at pick 40 and Green Bay just doesn't have the chance to take him. We will have to wait and see, but he does scream off the page as a realistic Green Bay Packer. Now we just have to wait and see if they actually take him. Number two on my list is Jordan Morgan, offensive lineman out of Arizona. A lot of the same things we just talked about with Dominic Puny. 6'5", 311, 9.24 relative athletic score at tackle. He did not do the agility drills, although his agility does look good on tape. Uh, 22 years old. Uh, as I mentioned, he didn't do the agility testing, so we don't know his full profile if he would be a complete, perfect Green Bay Packers prospect. Um, he also, this is one big thing. It is a barely um, under miss for arm length, but they look at 33 inch arms, or at least that seems to be the trend is that everyone's got 33 inch arms or larger at the offensive line, specifically offensive tackle. And he's under it. It's barely under. I mean, it's barely under. So I, again, Green Bay is going to have to break on something every now and again with some of these prospects. That's a pretty easy one to understand, especially if he does end up moving inside to guard. It becomes much less of an issue there than it is at offensive tackle. But that is one thing to consider here. But he was a senior bowl invitee. 
And like I said, very much similar to Dominic Puny. He's got the versatility. He's a tackle. They will likely start him at tackle to see if he can play outside. If not, he has the ability to move inside. He would compete, in my opinion, with Rasheed Walker at left tackle. He would compete at right guard with Sean Ryan. And even if he doesn't beat either of those players out, he's the first guy up off the bench and your sixth offensive lineman from from day one. And I think there's a really good chance that if they take him, he just starts from day one. So as I mentioned, I'm not huge on Jordan Morgan, not specifically my type of guy, but I can understand why Green Bay would very much like him. He hits everything again, except that arm length. And again, we don't have the agility testing, but my guess is he's at least close enough if even if he doesn't hit it, which there's a good chance he does. Um, he's just a Packers type all day, every day. And he's number two on my list because of that. Number three, we've talked about, and I spoiled it a little bit, Tyler Guyton, offensive tackle out of Oklahoma, 6'7", 322. Yes, he's slightly taller, slightly, slightly taller. The weight is not an issue here, but the the height, a little bit. I don't think that's going to be a deal breaker at all. 9.73 relative athletic score. He did everything except the bench press. He's 22 years old. He hits every single metric. He was a top 30 visit. He was at the senior bowl. Right away, he's going to, at minimum, be a swing tackle. I think he does have some left tackle, right tackle versatility. And I think we need to play that out a little bit because Brian Gutekinds has said he wants versatility along the offensive line. That's great. And that's what they should want. And they've had a ton of success doing that. But how much versatility does he want? What I mean by that is, is a Tyler Guyton who could theoretically play left tackle or right tackle, both sides, is that versatile enough? Do you have to be able to play tackle and guard? David Bakhtiari was just a tackle. Was that a bad thing? Probably not. Now, Zach Tom has five position versatility. Elton Jenkins has versatility all all along the offensive line as well. Those things are advantages. But I think as long as you have some versatility, like Amarius Mims is more of a question, like he might just be a right tackle, although I think he has some left tackle versatility as well. But like, how much do you actually need? Derek Sherrod, when the Packers drafted him, he was a tackle all day, every day. There was a small inkling for a you know minuscule second that maybe Brian Bulaga could play inside a little bit at guard, he was always going to be a tackle. He was never going to be a guard. So yes, it's great that you would sometimes like to have a little bit of versatility there, but Dave Bakhtiari, Brian Bulaga, some of these guys, they, they didn't have that. Chad Clifton was a left tackle. Mark Tauscher was always going to be a right tackle. So it's great to have that, but the left tackle, right tackle versatility might be just enough for Guyton. But again, he could be the right tackle right away and you could kick Zach Tom inside or you know, he could compete with Rasheed Walker at left tackle. Or again, he's just your first guy up off the bench and then you sort of move things around after that if needed. But either way, he hits everything that Green Bay looks for and has to be in the conversation on this list. Next up, as I also spoiled, Kingsley Suomataea, offensive tackle out of BYU. 6'4", 326, 9.40 relative athletic score, although it is incomplete. He did not do the agility testing. He is 21 years old, and we can't know for sure if he hits all of Green Bay's metrics without doing the agility testing, although I will say on tape, it does look like he is very much a Packers type. He was at the Senior Bowl, and how Green Bay would you know, basically bring Suamata Ea in as a depth and development piece. Now, he clearly, as a potential late first, early second. He's the, he's the weirdest dude in this draft. Meaning there are those in the draft community that have him late first round. Daniel Jeremiah has him outside of his top 100. He's like 121, somewhere in that range. There's like a 99 position difference on big boards with Kingsley Suomataea. And like, there's everything in between. There's people in the thirties, forties, fifties, sixties, 120. It is all over the place. But if they bring him in, even as like a first, second, third round guy, wherever they get him, in my opinion, he is a developmental player. He is not ready to play from day one right away. So he's probably not a first rounder, but he looks the part. And when he goes out and plays the way that he's supposed to, it looks incredible. Like he could be great, almost at left tackle, left guard, right guard, right tackle, almost any of those positions. And you're hoping that you get the best out of him but that's probably going to take some time, but he's probably a depth piece to begin with. And one of those real developmental pieces that you're hoping a year from now, maybe he can just take over at right tackle and Zach Tom can move to center and Josh Myers can leave in free agency. 
Maybe you need him sooner rather than later, but I think he's a, a draft, a true draft and develop offensive lineman that provides some depth for the time being, but in an ideal world, you wouldn't have to throw him to the fire right away and he could take some time to learn behind the current five along the offensive line. Next up, Mason Smith, interior defensive lineman out of LSU, 6'5", 306, 8.46 relative athletic score, and he did do the full testing. He hits every single key metric except... They usually like players that are 80th percentile or better in the broad jump. He's at 72%. Again, nowhere near a deal breaker here for Mason Smith. He's only 21 years old. He was in for a top 30 visit. And I've talked about this, but Green Bay likes taking players a year in advance. Next year, Kenny Clark and TJ Slayton are free agents. And there are few, very few defensive tackles that are in that Kenny Clark and you know TJ Slayton type mold the bigger guys, the more physical guys, the run-stopping guys. I will say, Mason Smith isn't a 1A perfect example of that, but he is 6'5", 306 with some real legitimate power that does sort of project as a better run-stopping defensive tackle moving forward. And that's exciting because, like I said, there's not many of those guys in this draft. Then there are just not many 6'5", 306 dudes that have a 8.46 relative athletic score along the defensive line. There's just not many made like Mason Smith. And he had a really nice freshman year. I think he was a torn ACL his his, uh, sophomore season. And then he came back last year and played for the first time since the injury. You could tell he wasn't quite himself. You're hoping he takes that next step recovering from the injury. You don't love, you know, the ACL injuries in college, but we're seeing a lot more of it, of course. Um, Either way, definitely a Packers type, definitely an interior defensive lineman that I think they'd be interested in. As I said, he was in for a top 30 visit and certainly worthy of being on this list. Marshawn Neeland, we've talked about him quite a bit. Defensive end out of Western Michigan, 6'3", 267, 9.08 relative athletic score, did full testing, 22 years old, hit all the key metrics. The only one that he's slightly below on Usually they like 6'4", defensive ends or edge rushers or higher. He's 6'3", but he hits everything else. So again, I don't think that's going to be a deal breaker. Was a top 30 visit, was at the Senior Bowl, and he would come in and be a rotational edge rusher right away, along with Preston Smith, Rashawn Gary, and LVN. And then next year, you probably move on from Preston Smith, and then you've got LVN, Rashawn Gary, Marshawn Neeland, and then Enigbari, hopefully fully recovered from injury at that point. Next up, Edrian Cooper, linebacker out of Texas A&M, another player that we've discussed quite a bit. 6'2", 230, 9.13 relative athletic score, did not do the bench press. 20, 20, uh, 22 years old, excuse me, hits all the metrics except for the broad jump. He was a little bit under, was at the 68th percentile. Again, usually they look for 80th percentile or better. Was in on a top 30 visit, and he would immediately be a starter next to Quay Walker. As we talked about, Goody was very adamant that he wants somebody that can do a little bit of everything. That is definitely Edrian Cooper. He fits. He's uh, definitely a Green Bay Packer type. And uh, like I said, would likely start next to Quay from day one. Next up, Peyton Wilson, linebacker, NC State, 6'3", 233, 9.89 relative athletic score, did not do the bench press. 23 years old, so just a hint over that 22 that they usually look for. Hits all the key metrics except 73% on the broad jump instead of 80, but he is a true athletic freak. Uh, We have a starting off-ball linebacker. Like Again, he hits a lot of the things that they look for. He would start next to Quay Walker right away, in my opinion, assuming that he was the only linebacker taken, that they didn't take two of them. The issue here is he's had a ton of injury issues. And I saw, I think, one anonymous scout say something like, you're basically drafting them just for the first contract. So that could put Green Bay off a little bit. But I do still think, based on his raw athleticism, the need for an off-ball linebacker, that he will be very high on their board. Next up, Javon Bullard, safety out of Georgia. 5'10", 198, 8.25 relative athletic score, did not do the broad jump. He's 21 years old. He actually does miss quite a few metrics, but barely. They usually look for eight or higher relative athletic score. He's at 7.31. They usually like their safeties 5'11 or bigger. He's 5'10 and a half. They usually like their safeties 200 pounds. He's 198. He also didn't do the broad jump, so we can't judge him there. Was a senior bowl invitee, and he, in my opinion, would be a starter opposite uh, Xavier McKinney from day one, would bring some special teams value to the table. I think he could also actually do a little bit of competing with Keyshawn Nixon in the slot as well. There's a little bit of uh, Darnell Savage to his game. 
I think the hope is that with Bullard, you get a better version of Darnell Savage, or at least the good version of Darnell Savage when he played well. Uh, but I still think he'd be very high on Green Bay's list opposite McKinney. We just heard Goody talk about he wants a safety to be versatile. Somebody you can play on the top, somebody you can play in the box, somebody you can play in the slot, and Bullard gives you a little bit of all of that. Next up, Blake Fisher, offensive tackle, Notre Dame. 6'5", 310. Again, this guy screams Green Bay Packer. 7.72 relative athletic score. Did full testing. He's only 21 years old. Hits all the key metrics except for the fact this is big. They usually like 7.75 seconds in the three cone. He was at 7.76. How dare you, Blake Fisher? Uh, he would immediately become a competition piece, in my opinion, for Rashid Walker. He's offensive line depth. I think he can play a variety of different positions. He could give Sean Ryan a run for his money. He hasn't really played much guard, but again, we know Green Bay doesn't mind kicking those guys inside. Swing tackle, there's so much you could do with them. And again, he's a huge, huge Packers fit along that offensive line. Next up, Roger Rosengarten, offensive tackle out of Washington, 6'5", 308, 9.19 relative athletic score, did not do the three cone, 21 years old, hit all the metrics, but again, did not do that three cone, so we don't know the agility testing for sure, was at the senior bowl, would immediately be a swing tackle behind Rasheed Walker and Zach Tom, give you a lot of competition, give you some depth, and eventually maybe is that starting right tackle down the line with Zach Tom again moving in at center for Josh Myers at some point. Next up, Mason McCormick, offensive lineman out of South Dakota State, 6'4", 309, 9.96 relative athletic score. The only thing he didn't do was the bench press. He is 23 years old. He hits every single metric, but did not play tackle. So that is one that, again, they usually like taking tackles and moving them inside, not always just taking interior offensive linemen, but I think he'll be at a place in the draft where they're a little bit more lenient with that sort of thing. He'd immediately be offensive line depth on the interior, left guard, center, right guard, and he could easily compete with Sean Ryan and Josh Myers. Number 13, a very Packers type, and I probably should have had him higher on this list. Brandon Coleman, offensive lineman out of TCU, 6'4", 9.96 relative athletic score, uh, did not do the bench press, 22 years old, he hits everything absolutely everything that Green Bay looks for was at the senior bowl. I think he would start right away over Sean Ryan. And I think it, I think I don't necessarily think it'd even be close. So they get a starter right away. He also has tackle guard versatility. He could kick outside in a pinch. This is a ultimate Green Bay Packers type. Trevin Wallace, linebacker out of Kentucky, 6'1", 237, 9.34 relative athletic score, did not do the agility testing, only 21 years old, hits every key metric for the linebacker position on a top 30 visit, was at the Senior Bowl, and like I said with the other linebackers, if they don't pick one of the other ones, I think he would be a starter immediately next to Quay Walker. There is a little bit of just maybe being a bit too undersized with Trevin Wallace and Quay Walker. They're both fast, they're both athletic but neither of them are real true thumpers. So that could be a little bit of an issue, but I still think he'll be very high on Green Bay's board. Next up, a player I really, really like in this draft, Renardo Green, corner out of FSU, 5'11", 186, 8.21 relative athletic score, although did not do the three cone or the bench press. He's 23 years old. He hits all the key metrics, save for they usually look for 190 pounds at corner. He's 186, clearly not a deal breaker. He did not do the three cone testing, so we don't quite know the agility, but he looked good on tape. Competes with Keyshawn Nixon from day one, in my opinion, and he can also play outside corner. So he does have that versatility that they look for. Could also be a really good special teams player. Jerry and Jones, another corner from FSU, six foot 190, 9.61 relative athletic score, although again, also did not do the three cone or the bench press. 22 years old, hits all the key metrics that they look for at corner, but once again, did not do the three cone. So we don't know the agility portion of this was a top 30 visit, and I think he would immediately compete and actually beat out Keyshawn Nixon at, in the slot. He's a big-time slot corner, probably day two selection, maybe early day three, uh, but I definitely think he'd compete with Nixon right away. Next up, number 17 on the list. We are winding down here a little bit at least. Isaac Gorendo, running back out of Louisville, six foot 221, 9.90 relative athletic score, uh, had full testing, so we there's no question marks there. 23 years old, it's every single running back metric. And in my opinion, he'd come in and be a rotational running back right away. A uh, different change of pace from what they have in Josh Jacobs, different change of pace from what they have in AJ Dillon, and somebody that has that breakaway speed and the ability to take it to the house. Donovan Jennings, offensive lineman from South Florida, 
323, 9.65 relative athletic score at guard, did not do the broad jump. 24 years old, hits all the key metrics along the offensive line, was in for a top 30 visit, was a tackle in college, will move inside to likely guard in the NFL. He's a developmental back of the roster offensive lineman with clear upside, but you just need to develop him a little bit. But I think he would make the 53-man roster. You're looking at probably a seventh round pick for Donovan Jennings. Number 19 on my list, Jalen Sundell, offensive lineman out of North Dakota State. 6'5", 301, 9.35 relative athletic score with full testing, so nothing missing there. 23 years old, hits every single offensive line metric and would immediately be offensive line depth and maybe just maybe give a Sean Ryan a little bit of a run for his money. Next up, Nick Gargiulo, offensive lineman out of South Carolina. 6'5", 318, 9.47 relative athletic score with full testing, 23 years old, again, hits every single offensive line metric and would immediately be offensive line depth, probably more on the interior at guard, but he does have some versatility along the line. Number 21 on my list, Trey Benson, running back out of Florida State. A lot of Florida State guys on this list. There's also another safety that I almost put on uh, that was a top 30 visit whose name is escaping me at the moment. It is, sorry, Akeem Dent. Almost put him on the list as well. So a lot of Florida State options here for Green Bay. But Benson, uh, I digress, is six foot 216, 9.76 relative athletic score. Did not do the agility testing. Still only 21 years old. Hits all the key running back metrics. And he would be a beautiful, beautiful change of pace for Dylan and Josh Jacobs at the running back position. And a player who could truly take it to the house at any given moment. Next up, safety, Jalen Carlies out of Missouri, 6'2", 227, 8.26 relative athletic score with full testing, only 22 years old, hits every key metric for the safety position, was a top 30 visit, and he would immediately be safety competition. You probably want him to be your number four, number five to begin with, but I do think he could compete, you know, compete and he'd be a core special teamer right away. Next up, Katan Oladapo, safety out of Oregon State. 6'2", 216, 8.18 relative athletic score, did not do the agility testing, 23 years old, hits all the key metrics except for the broad jump. Usually they look for 80% or more. He was only at 37%, so that is quite a bit off their threshold, but I think later in the draft, he would still be considered in a weak safety class, was in for a top 30 visit, was at the senior bowl. I think he'd actually compete for a starting safety spot if they didn't pick one ahead of him, uh, but likely he would probably be maybe more that number three, number four guy with some special teams value as well. Number 24 on my list, Jaden Hicks, safety out of Washington State. 6'2", 211, 8.97 relative athletic score with full testing, 22 years old. The only thing that he's missing from a metric standpoint is the broad jump. Again, usually they look for 80%. He's at 76 percentile. Again, super close, so it's not going to be a deal breaker. He was at the Senior Bowl. He'd be a beautiful, perfect starter next to Xavier McKinney. I think in most cases, you're going to have McKinney in the post and Jaden Hicks in the box, but I do think Hicks has the ability to kick back and play that post safety, place him too high, whatever you need him to do. I don't think he you know, can be that slot guy. That's something that isn't part of the evaluation here for Hicks, but everything else he can do, and he'd be a beautiful box safety next to Xavier McKinney. Last but not least is Eric Watts, defensive end out of UConn, 6'5", 274, a little bit more of a bigger player, 9.95 relative athletic score, 22 years old, hits all the key metrics, again, except for the broad jump where they look for 80th percentile or better. He's in the 72nd percentile, so not far off. Senior Bowl invitee, he'd be a developmental and rotational edge rusher from day one. All right, before we recap the list of 25, since... My number one honorable mention last year was Grant DuBose, and I did not put him on the list, and he ended up becoming a Packer. I'll give you my three other honorable mentions really quick. Cam Hart, corner out of Notre Dame, 6'2", 202, 9.0 relative athletic score with full testing, 23 years old, hits all the key metrics, save for the three cone where they look for seven seconds or under. He was at 7.12, not too far off. Cole Bishop, the safety out of Utah, 6'1", 206, 9.88 relative athletic score, but did not do the bench press or the agility. 21 years old, hits all the key metrics except that broad jump where, again, 80% is what they look for. He's at 79, close enough. I think he'd be a starter next to Xavier McKinney. He doesn't quite have that versatility. He is a box safety through and through. And we just heard Goody talk about that versatility, which is why I put him on my honorable mention list, but he still hits a lot of the things that they look for. And last but not least, my last honorable mention, Tanner Bartolini, offensive lineman from Wisconsin, 6'4", 303, 
9.77 relative athletic score with full testing, 22 years old, hits every single metric along the offensive line, except for he has massively short arms. And I think that actually could be a deal breaker. I had him on my list and then that was the, like they are over an inch and a half shorter from what they look for. I I know they're going to play him on the interior. It's not as big, but they're still so short that I really question if he'd be on their list. But he'd be great offensive line depth and maybe could challenge center or right guard from day one. All right, just to recap everything here, my list of 25. So we will see. I'm going to come back to this at the end and see how many of these we got right. Dominic Puny, Jordan Morgan, Tyler Guyton, Kingsley Suamataea, Mason Smith, Marshawn Neeland, Edrian Cooper, Peyton Wilson, Javon Bullard, Blake Fisher, Roger Rosengarten, Mason McCormick, Brandon Coleman, Trevin Wallace, Renardo Green, Jerry and Jones, Isaac Gurendo, Donovan Jennings, Jalen Sundell, Nick Gargiulo, Trey Benson, Jalen Carlies, Katan Oladapo, Jaden Hicks, and Eric Watts. Those are my 25. Honorable mentions, Cam Hart, Cole Bishop, and Tanner Bartolini. That's it. We'll see if I can uh, get a few more right. Also, one thing really quick here. Notice how many offensive linemen are on this list. Let's actually count them up here. Dominic Puny, Jordan Morgan, Tyler Guyton, Kingsley Sumataea. Let's take a break. Blake Fisher, Roger Rosengarten, Mason McCormick, Brandon Coleman. Is that going to be it? Donovan Jennings is number nine. Jalen Sandell is 10. Gargiulo is 11. And then uh, Bartolini, as an honorable mention, would be 12. So there's 12 offensive linemen that are extreme Packers types that are available first round, second round, third round, fourth round, fifth round, sixth round, seventh round. So I do think there's a really good chance three, four offensive linemen in this draft. And I do think that it's worth noting that they may not have to get them round one. There are going to be options available that are very Packers-like that could come in and help, I think, right away. It just is really going to be dependent upon what's there in round one. There's some guys there. Jordan Morgan, Tyler Guyton, maybe a Mary Smims as well. There, there could be others. Um, Grant Barton would be on this list. I just think he probably ends up getting taken a little bit before Green Bay, but he'd be another guy. But there are a ton of offensive linemen that fit Green Bay's needs, that fit their thresholds, that fit what they look for. So don't be surprised if this is a very offensive line heavy draft from Brian Gutekinds. That is going to do it for today. Our last episode, our penultimate episode before the draft. Tomorrow, we will do a full draft preview. I can't wait for that. Make sure to check out the members only Q&A at noon today on Wednesday. I will talk to all of you guys soon. Shout out to our Hall of Fame and All-Pro members, Mo State in Minnesota, and PJ Wayne, John Wild, Jay Dad, Brandon Paletta, Jennifer Wright, Boom Handle, Donald Lee, Lori Lord, Baby QB, David McCluskey, Donald Decker, Bremen, David Prendergast, Dan Miller, and Alex Wang. I will see you guys soon, but until next time, and as always, Go Pack Go.